unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and we will call him Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. No.
pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed and registered. Mm -hmm. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. And so all went to be registered, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and the lineage of David. To be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for him in the inn. <laughs>
Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good things, good tidings of great joy, which will be with all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, not just a son, but a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swallowing cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men.
having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when he saw him, or when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. Consider what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, a hope, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great, and he will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Since I don't know a man. The angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, the Holy One who is to be born will be called, not just your son, but the Son of God. Amen. Amen. And now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all those things, and she pondered them in her heart. Perfect love, amen? amen. His life was perfect. 
so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger.
This is not my opinion, church. But this is what Isaiah wrote. Whenever he said in Isaiah 53, Who has believed our report? And who has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken. Smitten by God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, church. He was bruised for our iniquities and our sins. And the chastisement of our peace. Our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. And we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to our own way. And the Lord has laid it on him. Praise God. Amen. What has he laid on him? The iniquity. The sin of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted. He opened not his mouth. And he was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a, sleep, as a sheep before his sayers is silent. He opened not his mouth. It's about how every 
You know, as you get ready and start examining yourself, some of you we know, some of you we don't know. And I tell you, this Christmas would be a great time for you to give your heart to Jesus if you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. It truly is about the end of Jesus' life that we want to point you to today. You know, when Jesus was, was born, uh, we took that and we've celebrated it in many different ways. But truly, he came to this earth for one purpose, according to the Christmas story. And that was to show us his love and to save us from our sins. You know, every Christmas season, I try to pick out something in the Christmas story. And I try to focus on it and zoom in on it and think about it, ponder it in my heart. I always think about how Mary, when the Holy Spirit brought Jesus into her body, what she, might, what she must have been thinking when she knew that it had to be a miracle. She pondered things in her heart. And I want you to ponder some things in your heart today with us. But one particular part of Scripture I found myself in during this Christmas season, and it is when Jesus was on the cross. And you say, Pastor, how is that tied to Christmas? Well, in John chapter 19, we, we see this story and we see this scene of Jesus on the cross. And Jesus is about to die for our sins. And he says some, some words that kind of sh struck a chord in my heart this season. And I want to share it with you. But when Jesus was on the cross and his mother Mary was at the foot of the cross, and that's where we all are right now, brothers and sisters. Every one of us, I don't care where you are in life, right now we're at the same place. And it's the foot of the cross, right where Mary was. But Jesus said some words, and we know that he said it is finished. Before that, he asked, he said, I thirst. But there's some words that he said before he said those words in that same chapter that I want to share with you, and they are this. When Mary and Mary Magdalene were at the foot of the cross where we are today, on level ground, nobody's any better than anybody else. No matter where you come from, no matter your background, no matter what you've been through, I come to tell you that Jesus came for you today sin that you may have committed before you came or sin that you may have committed last night, listen, it can be under the blood to right now and today. But here goes the words that Jesus said to Mary. Jesus said, Woman, behold thou son. When he was on the cross. Those are some powerful words. I kind of overlooked it never seen it the way the Holy Spirit showed it to me this time, but we know that, and we've heard it preached that when Jesus said those words, he was talking to John because the, there was a disciple with him, and with Mary, and Jesus knew he was about to die. And he didn't want his mother to not be taken care of. And so Jesus said, Woman, thou son, when he was on the cross. Woman, thou son. Now, he didn't say mother. He didn't say mom. This struck me because he said woman. Now, if I look at my mother back in the day, <laughs> Miss Nancy's laughing. Oh, yeah. And I would have approached her and I would have said, woman, you know what she would have done to me? Yeah, you got it right know what your mother would have probably done, but here, oh, this has struck me right here because there was, there was a transition of her son becoming Savior when he was on the cross. And whenever he looked at her and he said, Woman, thou son. I put myself this, this year in Mary's shoes 
as she was looking at her 33 year old son probably in a state of grief where she was out of it as she, think about it mother as she looked at her son dripping blood on a cross knowing that he had done nothing wrong watching him bleed for the for the sins of the world, for you and me. I can imagine her in a, in a moment looking at her 33-year-old son at the foot of the cross thinking, how in the world? I, I don't even, he, she may not even have heard him say, woman, thou son. She was probably in a state of mind where he had to say something to get her attention. She was looking at him saying, how can this be? I watched you feed the 5,000. I watched you turn water into wine. Why are you up there on that cross? I know you could come down off of that cross. Why am I having to watch you die? I imagine as a mother, she probably remembered when he ran away and she found him in the temple teaching at the age of 12. There's no telling what was running through Mary's mind right then. Or how she had to put a band-aid on his knee from where he scraped it. Or how many splinters she probably had to dig out of his hand as he was working as a carpenter. But you see, there was something that was said in this story. Mary, what's going to be born to you, you're going to give birth to a son. They're going to call his name Jesus, and he's going to be the Savior of the world. And his name is going to be Emmanuel, and he's going to mean God with us. And I imagine when she probably went back looking at her son, when he was a baby, she probably went back to this story thinking, oh my Lord, I remember when I was running around and he was about to drop and I couldn't find a place to give birth and I had to knock on the door and there was no room for him. I had to place him in a manger, but I, he had to come. He had to come to this earth. Now, why is that story important? That story is important because the beginning of Jesus' life it's all about the end of Jesus' life. And the day, the beginning at the foot of the cross for somebody who hasn't given their heart to Jesus, it's truly about the end, which is eternal life. Everything that you do now in this life for Jesus is about the end of the story. It's about being saved. And I don't know if you know Him as your personal Lord and Savior, but I can tell you on that day hope was born. I can tell you when she looked at Him, she was holding on to a promise, an expectation of hope filled her soul to be able to allow Him to hang on that cross because she knew there was something great she knew he was the Son of God. And today, as you examine your heart, it can be a beginning of a new day for you. I know 2020 has been hard. You know, this world tries to give us hope. Listen to your pastor. It's a false hope. It's a false hope. Nothing can save you. No one can save you but Jesus. You won't have enough. You won't work hard enough. The right person won't come into your life to save you. Only Jesus can do that. And He wants you to give your heart to Jesus today. So with all eyes closed, if you allow us this morning to 
to give somebody an opportunity to give to ask Jesus into their heart before we partake in communion. If you don't know Jesus, maybe you've heard about him. Today could be the day. If there's sin and you say, Pastor, I am an unbeliever. I have sin in my life. I want Jesus to come in and save me from my sins. Would you just lift up your hand real quick? This can be the best Christmas that you'll ever have. Yes, amen. Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else? You just heard the greatest story you'll ever hear. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. He's, he's asking, can I come into your heart? Is there room for me? Will you open the door to your heart and let me live and give you eternal life? If you'll let, he's telling you, if you'll let me live in your heart today, I'll let you live in my kingdom for eternity. He's wanting to give you a hope. Just lift your hand real quick. You can put it back down. I'm not going to embarrass you. All right, believers, if you'll take the bread which symbolizes the body of Christ, if you'll grab it, we want to give God praise. Amen. They're rejoicing right now in heaven for that one person. Gave their heart to Jesus. Yes, let's rejoice with all of heaven. Amen. Amen. Listen, what you have in your hand symbolizes Jesus' body and Jesus' blood. We're going to partake in the, in the bread first. Father, this symbolizes your body which was broken for us told us to do this in remembrance of you as often as we think about it, Lord. So this is your body. We thank you for it being broken on the cross. We thank you for you dying on the cross for our sins. Lord, we do not take this lightly. We know that we would not have eternal life if it wasn't for the work of the cross. God, we partake in your body, thanking and, and praising you and giving glory and honor. We do it with joy. And we pray for peace with a blessed hope that imparted in our life. May partake of his body. Lord, this is your blood which was poured out for us, was shed. We thank you for your blood, Jesus, that covers our sin. We knew there had to be blood, and you made the ultimate sacrifice. God, as we examine ourselves, Lord, we just thank you for the blood that washes away our sins. We ask, God, that you'll just touch us in a supernatural way, God, today. You may partake in his body. Hey, love came for us, amen? Abby's going to sing about it. Abby, if you'll sing about that. Hey, why don't you worship with us?
if you would stand as I read these last verses of Scripture. And we want to wish you a Merry Christmas. As you go out, as you celebrate, they're going to sing one more song, and I'm going to share some Scripture with you. But I want you to worship God in this last song before we dismiss. We want you to just be safe. Again, remember, um, as you go out, to be mindful and kind to others. Everybody is... Uh, Everybody might not be, everybody's different. People might not be as you are. So be kind and be safe. But this right here is what it's about, church, as we go out. Listen to these scriptures. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. Listen to what the angel answered and said to the woman. Do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he is risen. Hallelujah. As he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. And ran to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, guess who met them? Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. And then the eleven disciples went away to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed to them. And I'm telling you, there's coming an appointed time when we will see Jesus again. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And the church said, Amen. Worship him this morning. Thank you.